So what's a kin catalyst? I think that's the first thing we want to kind of explain to you, because this was our first kin catalyst. So kin catalyst is where the Kellogg Innovation Network identifies either an industry or an issue that has a major impact on global prosperity, and that we feel that we as an organization can help catalyze action uh, in terms of step change innovation to address the challenges and opportunities that industry has. And we, in the resource industry, we were able to tick all the boxes. And I think Mark and I kind of, uh, fellow board members, we said that this is the right industry because it's at, at very much at a crossroad as you kind of uh, got that feeling from uh, the video. So when you think about that crossroad, is what does that actually mean? So these are just a sample of headlines that have been coming out uh, over just the last kind of two months that we're ahead of, of the event in Brazil. Uh, it's significant. The industry faces significant challenges from the countries in which it operates. It doesn't matter if it's in the developed countries like Australia uh, or in the developing world in terms of you know, super taxes, new royalty arrangements that un basically fundamentally change the contractual arrangements that were uh, developed when the projects were committed to. Uh, full nationalisation occurs, so imagine you invest $2 billion in a project and the country just says, thanks, you can leave now, or we're going to change the ownership, we'll take 60% instead of the, the 30. Uh, productivity is uh, declining. Australia, which is probably considered one of the most leading mining countries in the world, they've had an average 15% decline in productivity per annum for the last five years. And on a cost structure side, the industry, depending on what commodity, or region, the, the cost increases are anything from 20 to 40 percent a year. So when you look at it, this is just unsustainable, and it gets to the point that Mark says is that, you know, when you look at this, we're just not going to be able to provide the resources uh, that we need both in this country and the developed world and the developing world. Just to give you an example, take my iPhone out. This has 71 different minerals in it. 71. I mean, we don't think about that. You don't, just don't think there's 71 things that came out of the ground to build this baby. Okay, so Apple does. So, you know, so we're just blind to it. So, but, so that's kind of the why, and I think, uh, you know, the, the guys here will kind of expand on that. So what we did with Catalyst is we assembled 45 executives uh, from around the world, from four continents. Uh, we had representatives and C-level executives from the mining industry themselves from the tradition, what I call the traditional supplier base, from a supply, uh, both equipment and technology. Uh, we had people from emerge companies that are looking at the mining industry as new entrants, like 3M, okay? So they had, that's, their, their number one new growth initiative is the mining industry, 3M. We had people from major research institutions, we had representatives of NGOs, so uh, Ray represented uh, Oxfam NGO, we had the United Nations there, uh, we had government people, and of course we had investors there to keep us honest. Uh, around, you know, it's all about return on capital, guys. So, so we had a great diverse audience um, that was really fantastic, and, and at the same time as having a very vigorous discussion, we also had a lot of education going on as well. So what we did was we, uh, this was a four-day program, so, and I won't go through it in depth, so we, you know, we talk about setting the stage where we kind of outline the problem and the challenge, which not everybody in the industry readily accepts that there are these challenges. Uh, and we had a very refreshing discussion. Um, then we did kind of a deep dive uh, around that, and then we did kind of the explore, develop, and create, which is really a process that we went through, because the whole idea of the catalyst was to create action. So we curated a process that caused the people at the end to make a choice to either act and accept the challenge of moving away from the status quo, okay, or accept the status quo. So they had to make a decision. And you'll see, I'm very pleased to announce that there are some actually physical initiatives that were spawned out of this. And then lastly, we actually went and saw a real mine. So for many of the people that weren't kind of, that are on the periphery of mine, this was the first mine that they saw in Samarco, which was a joint venture. Uh, it was just fantastic. So, so these were kind of the two panels. So most of this was working sessions. Most of these people, I mean, they're all new Kenyans. There are only about three or four you know, core Kenyans. Jörn was there, Dennis Brown was there, but the rest were people that had never experienced a kin event before. And they were blown away. They'd never been to an event where it wasn't lots of PowerPoints, lots of, where they had to really work for four days and do things. Um, so this gives you an idea of the diversity of the people and the companies that we uh, had. So we focused, we focused on two things. One was the operating platform, which is the how we mine, from, the, from exploration to reclamation, okay, from that, that whole value chain. 
So we talked about that as the unsustainability of that model. And then the other one was what we call a business model. And the business model is how a resource company uh, engages with a country and a community to secure the rights to the resource and then maintains those rights over 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, which is a typical life of a, of a mine. Okay, so that's that whole business model. Okay, uh, obviously, uh, and this is the second time Kenyans had to put on hard hats. We did that at Panama. So that's Jon, so that you can see there, the gentleman with the glasses. So Jon, that's you, right? He had a fantastic time. So, but, uh, and Samarco, just so you know, is a, is, is a fantastic mining company. It's a joint venture with Vali, the Brazilian mining giant, and BHP, which is the world's largest mining company. Just so you know, BHP, from a mining company size, is one of the top 10 companies in the world from a market cap and revenue perspective. Okay, so just give you an idea of scale. It's a very interesting mine. It's right in the middle of kind of jungle and rainforest. And they actually, the resources are put through a pipeline in a slurry for 400 kilometers, 9,000 feet from above sea level down to the ports. So it's quite a unique kind of operation. So it's kind of very cool to see. So at the end, we actually resulted in four fantastic initiatives that are at various stages of development. So the most exciting one is the development partner uh, initiative which is to develop a whole new business model, a much newer, new multi-stakeholder model. And again, uh, Mark, Ray, and Mark will uh, talk more fully about this. But basically what it is, is we have formed a working group, and the working group consists of uh, Mark Kutafani is leading that group, and two other mining CEOs. Ray Offenheiser, president of Oxfam, is on that. Uh, Eric from the UN Habitat is uh, on that as well, and one technology company. <clears throat> and we'll be having our first working party meeting uh, here at Kellogg and will be hosting it uh, in the coming couple of months. And we're also going to be opening this to the broader community to get involved. And the idea there is to develop a framework that we will then socialize with the broader industry to try and have an adoption of a whole new approach. <clears throat> then we talked about a revigorated R&D, which is being led by Anglo-American. And that's kind of centered in Australia at the moment, which is really moving some key facets of R&D. And Mark talked about this very low scale of R&D. And it's about moving uh, into a much more sort of breakthrough innovation, increasing the cycle time between invention and commercialization, and just increasing the scale of investment that's necessary to make the changes in the industry. Um, so very, very important. Uh, and then last, the last two were recalibrating the workforce and education. So the Colorado School of Mines has taken the lead of that on this, which is creating a whole new education curricula to really design and educate the mining worker of the future. Because if you look where the industry needs to go, there's a whole new set of skills and capabilities and people we need. And the industry suffers a massive labor shortage. It's significant. So to the extent that truck drivers in Australia earning $150,000 a year, US, to drive a truck two weeks a month, welders are earning half a million dollars, janitors earn $110,000. So it's an that's an extreme case, but it's a massive shortages driving costs up. And then last is the total life cycle value, which Kellogg is actually going to be the lead on, and we're going to be looking for an independent sponsor, which is really to identify, so on product, goods and services, the initial vision is to you know, educate the community about, so you could, for example, you know, have an iPhone app that you can scan something, learn about all the resources and the foot, uh, environmental footprint, or even have something on an iPhone to tell you what's in it. So we educate the broader community to understand the value of minerals and their environmental footprint. But that's, some, that's in the work. So we're very excited about these four initiatives. Um, and hopefully they'll start making progress. They all have industry leaders. So I think it's the first time for really for Kin that we've actually catalyzed action in an industry. And we're excited because we may actually have been the catalyst to transform a critical industry to the world. So it's tremendously exciting.